Coming up on Fresh Dew with Pastor Inkechi Ene. Embrace yourself with the Word of God. Head yourself around with the Word of Truth. Head yourself around by the Holy Ghost and you'll be protected from such false ministers who are only out to deceive, if possible, the elect and they're out also to distract you from your reward. Engage. Log on to freshdew.tv today and receive fresh inspiration and direction for your life. Hello and welcome to Fresh Dew. I am Pastor Nkechi Ene and it's always my pleasure to welcome you to every single episode of Fresh Dew. Today on Fresh Dew, we continue our message series, Discernment for the Last Days. And this is part 14 of that message series. Now, this message is being taken in three sections. The first section was recognizing a balanced gospel. And we took that from parts 1 to part 10. From part 11, we began the second section, which is recognizing a false minister. Recognizing a false minister. And we're still on that section now. When we're done with this, we'll go to the third section, which is recognizing a good shepherd recognizing a good shepherd. Now, under recognizing a false minister, we began by defining who a false minister was, and then we began to answer the question, where do false ministers come from? We found out that false ministers come from within and from without. Then the third question we began to find, ask rather, was what is the manifesto of false ministers? We found out that the manifesto of false ministers is exactly on all fours with the manifesto of Satan, which is not surprising, because false ministers are backed up by Satan. So we found out that you know, false ministers have the same manifesto as that of Satan. And we saw that in John 10.10 10 and John 8.44. They're against the truth, basically, and they're out to kill you. So we began to look at details of that manifesto. We said the manifesto of false ministers is very strategic. And it's a manifesto that is set out to do several things, targeted to do several things. One of them, we said, was to deceive even the very elect to deceive even the very elect. The second you know, target of these manifestos, where, where we'll kick off from today, and that is to distract you from your reward or to distract them, the people they're after, from their reward. False ministers are out to distract you, child of God, from your reward. That word distract means to prevent someone from concentrating on something. To distract means to prevent someone from concentrating on something. We said to distract you from your reward. So when a believer is deceived, when a believer is distracted by a false minister, he's taken off the route and, you know, cheated basically of what was rightfully his. He's taken off the route and cheated of what was rightfully his. Let's look at Hebrews 12, 1 to 2, and I want to read that from the Kenneth Woods translation. Therefore also, as for us, having so great a cloud of those who are bearing testimony, that is the heroes of faith of chapter 11, Surrounding us, having put off and away from ourselves once and for all, every encumbrance and that sin which so deftly and cleverly places itself in an entangling way around us. With patience, let us be running the race lying before us, looking off and away to Jesus. In other words, keeping your focus, concentrating, looking off from distractions, looking off from that sin, looking off from things that would 
you know, make you miss, miss the mark or keep your eyes off the target. It says, look up from those things and keep your eyes on Jesus, looking unto Jesus, the New King James says. So looking off and away to Jesus, the originator and perfecter of these aforementioned faith, who, instead of the joy, then present with him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Let's use this analogy. Imagine you're, you're, you're a, a track and field um, star, and you're racing in a, in a race, you're on the race track, and you're heading for gold. You're in position one, and then something happens. You get distracted, somebody yells from the stands, or someone runs across, or just something terrible happens, and you get distracted. You either trip and fall, or you get you know, swerved off, and before you know it, you're going off onto another track, or you've missed your track, and you were the first. What do you think that would do to you? Not only did you embarrass yourself in front of everybody, you missed the prize. You missed the gold, you missed the mark. It means that when you were running, you were running with the knowledge that there was a reward waiting for you. There was something waiting for you. Child of God, there is a reward that waits for us when we run this race of faith and this race of life right here on earth. There is a reward. Not just the rewards you receive here on earth, but also the rewards you receive in heaven. So when the, the false ministers come after you, their target is to distract you, get you off the track so that you miss your reward. And when you begin to think about what rewards these are, what, what, what God has in store for you, you certainly don't want to be that person who was distracted by a false minister. Look at Acts 20, 30 to 31. Also from among yourselves, men will rise up, speaking perverse things. Remember we said that false ministers, they lie and they war against the truth. You see that again, speaking these things that are not true. Speaking perverse things, what's the purpose? To draw away the disciples after themselves. Question, if you're a disciple who's after Christ and there is a reward in front of you, if you're drawn away from Christ and you're drawn away to these false ministers, do you think the reward and the prize will follow you? Certainly not. That reward and that prize is with Christ, is with running the race with Christ, running the race that Christ has given you to run. If perverse truths and perverse words spoken by false prophets can get you to be distracted, drawn away, the Bible says, after themselves, there is no reward from God waiting for you on that path. And that's what this is all about. Therefore, watch and remember that for three years I did not cease to warn everyone night and day with tears. What does it mean to draw away? To draw away means to wrench away from, to drag forth, literally to unsheath a sword or relatively with a degree of force implied to retire. This, this, is, not, this, this is not something kind we're talking about. It's, it's a kind of evil enticing, seducing. Draw you away, take you away, take you off, drag you away, drag you forth, retire you. Again, another example. Can you imagine a man who, you know, his contract or his, his ag agreement with his company, that after 25 years, he'll be retired with all his benefits. And then some mean GM comes to the office and, you know, doesn't like him and trips him up, finds a way to trip him up. And he's 24 years and six months in employment. And that GM finds a way to fire him. He's had a record of integrity. He's never done anything wrong. His attitude, attitude to work has always been right. He delivers results. And he's 24 and a half years in the company. And the agreement with the company is that after 25 years, you can retire voluntarily and you can receive all your wages and all your fat, 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 big, 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 big rewards. And he's retired. Or he's worse still, he's sacked at that time. That is not good. And that is what the enemy is after, to distract you, child of God, and lure you away from the path, lure you away from the race, lure you away from the track that God has given you to run. And before you know it, you are, you've missed the prize. Let's look at some more scriptures. Look at 1 Corinthians 9, 24. Do you not know that all, that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Again, you see here, there is a prize. Run in such a way that you may obtain it. The way to run to obtain it is to stay away from the perverse truths being spoken by you know, false ministers. I said in the last episode we took that you know these people just say these things. But if you have been grounded and embedded in the word, if you embrace, the, take out the time, the strategy, the patience to embrace as a child of God, the truth of God's word, to pray for yourself, to receive the spirit of wisdom and, and revelation in the knowledge of him, when somebody speaks a perverse truth around you, you will not be deceived. You will know a lie from a lie and the truth from the truth, no matter how convincing it looks. 
So you need to run in that way so as to obtain this prize. Look at what Paul said about, about himself in 2 Timothy 4, 7 to 8. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Glory be to God that we may all say this at the time of our departing, that we have fought the good fight. We have finished our race. Lord, I will fight the good fight. I will finish my race. I will finish my race. I will keep the faith. Keep it. Nothing will, 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 will tamper it. I will keep the faith. Finally, look at that now. You see, he's fought a fight. He's run a race. He's kept the faith. But this is the focus. This was the reason. This is why he did all of this. Finally, there is laid up for me a crown or the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge himself, will give to me on that day. Was this just for Paul? And not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Glory be to God. Let's be like Paul. Let's not be deceived and distracted by false ministers because all they want to do is take away, take away the reward from you. Galatians 1, 6 to 9. I marvel that you are so soon, that you, I'm mean, reading the King James. I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ, note that, in the grace of Christ, to a different gospel, which is not another. But there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even, we, but even if we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel to you than what we have preached to you, let him be accursed, as we have said before. So now I say again, if anyone preaches, we looked at this on the balanced gospel, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you, than what you have received, let him be accursed. But he's asking the Galatians, I'm surprised. Why have you turned away so soon? Why have you transported yourself? Why have you changed sides, like in a, in a match, um, for this country, then suddenly I decide I'm rooting for this country? Why have you turned away? Why have you changed sides? Change sides from where? From Christ to Satan. Why have you turned? And you did it so soon. Why did you turn away? Child of God, nothing should distract you to the point where you turn away from your first love. You turn away from the faith that you first heard in the gospel of Christ. And look at what it says. It says, you've turned away from him who called you in the grace of Christ. Pause and think about that. We're talking about the, the reward. I remember I said there's a reward here on, on earth and there's a reward in heaven. But, so what are you really turning away, turning away from? Is it something minor? Is it something Satan can provide? No, you're turning away from him who called you in the grace of Christ. What is the grace of Christ? We have many definitions for grace. I don't have the time to go into them. But the simple acronym that will help you remember this is G-R-A-C-E, God's riches at Christ's expense. Wow, God's riches. You are turning away from something that you were called, it says you were called in the grace of God. You were called in God's riches already paid for. Only a dummy will turn away from grace. I'll say it again, only a dummy will turn away from grace. It says God's, God's, not your father's riches, God's riches for those religious Christians who don't like to hear the word riches. Riches are riches. Riches spiritually, riches materially, riches financially. God is not poor. God is not bankrupt. God's riches already paid for for you at Christ's expense. Why would you be turning away so soon from such, from the grace of God? Look at 2 Corinthians 8, 9 and 9, 9 8. 8, 9 says, for you know the grace of God grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might become rich. You turn away from this. You allow yourself to be distracted by this. Jesus gave up his wealth so that you could have um, wealth and he took on poverty so that you could be free of poverty and you walk away from that following some false prophet who is only after how to enrich himself. I marvel that you would allow yourself to be distracted so soon from the grace of God. 2 Corinthians 9, 8, God is able to make all grace abound, abound, abound towards you, that you always, having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work, and so on and so forth, and it shows how you disperse, to the, disperse abroad and give to the poor. That is what grace of God does for you. The grace of God abounds towards each other. Why would you turn away from the grace of God? Why would you let yourself be distracted by perverse truths? And most times, when you see people who have been distracted by false ministers, their lives go like this. Their lives don't necessarily begin to go higher and higher because you've turned away from all grace that abounds, rushes towards you that you may have an abundance to every good work. Ephesians 1, 7 to 14. Again, I won't read it because of time. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according 
according to the riches of his grace. Again, verse 8, abound, which he made to abound towards us in all wisdom and prudence. Goes on further to say, you have obtained an inheritance in him. And further in verse 13, to say in him, you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, that balanced gospel of your salvation. You heard the word of truth and you trusted in him. And then some false minister walks along and gives you perverse words, gives you lies that are contrary to the truth. And you allow yourself to meditate them and be distracted. Embrace yourself with the word of God. Head yourself around with the word of truth. Head yourself around by the Holy Ghost. And you'll be protected from such false ministers who are only out to deceive, if possible, the elect. And they're out also to distract you from your reward. Third thing these false ministers want to do is they're out to destroy the flock and to destroy them mercilessly. You remember these three words, to deceive you, to distract you, and finally to destroy you. The thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That is the manifesto of Satan, and this is the manifesto of false ministers. On all fours, they're out to deceive you. If possible, they elect the children of God. They will deceive them. They're out to, to, to distract you, not just to distract you from child's play, but to distract you from your reward, to distract you from the riches of his grace, to distract you from a point where you have abundance and be able to have abundance for other people. That is what he wants to distract you from, child of God, to distract you from knowing that the grace of God envelopes you, to distract you from knowing that you are accepted in the beloved, to distract you from knowing that you are in Christ and Christ is in you, the hope of glory, to distract you from things that God has already given to you by promising you things that look attractive and not letting you understand by revelation knowledge what is already yours and how you, how you are to receive those things. It is sad. It is, it is literally heartbreaking when you see believers, saints who are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, people who have obtained an inheritance from the word of truth they first believed, and you see them veer off the racetrack, veer off the path, or retire or resign early just to follow a false minister who is promising them nothing, nothing compared to what they already had in Christ Jesus. I said the, the third one is that the false ministers want to destroy the flock and to destroy them mercilessly. To destroy in the English language means to end the existence of something. You're going to see in these things we're going to look at now that the enemy is not playing games with you. And many of us are asleep on him, asleep on him, asleep on his agenda, asleep on his manifesto. He hates you, particularly if you're a child of God. He hates you thoroughly. And there's nothing to be afraid of because he is a loser under your feet and you are the occupation army. The only thing you need to do is occupy. Occupy till he comes. Occupy what Jesus already won for you. But if you get afraid by all his, you know, roaring and his toothless bulldog antics and, you know, roaring like a lion, even though he's not the lion, you begin to get afraid. When you get afraid, that's another way he distracts you. He distracts you from your faith, distracts you by, 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 by making you begin to think doubt and unbelief and thinking this is not happening here. Let me go somewhere else and do it another way. No, no. He hates you. There's nothing good that he thinks about you. The thoughts that the Father thinks of you are thoughts of good and not of evil, to give you a hope and a future, give you an expected end. That is what your Father thinks about you. But the enemy, all he wants to do is find a way. He does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy you. And false ministers want to destroy you as well, and they want to destroy you mercilessly. So destroy, I said, means to end the existence of something by damaging or attacking it, to ruin someone emotionally or spiritually, to defeat utterly and to kill. That is what it means to destroy. So these false ministers, they are here to destroy the flock and they are here to do it mercilessly and with reckless abandon. So we must take up our guard and we must know that this is what they're out to do, but it's already too late because Christ has already saved us. Acts 20, 29. For I know this, that after my departure, savage wolves will come in from, come in from among you, not sparing the flock, not sparing, not sparing. To spare means to be cautious, to be careful, to abstain, to treat leniently, to spare. Not sparing. Satan will never spare you. False ministers will never spare you. They will act like they're sparing you, but they will never spare you. They will never treat you leniently because that is their target and that is their purpose. Not sparing. Not is an absolute denial. God forbid. So God forbid that false ministers will spare you. God forbid that Satan and his gang will ever treat you leniently. God forbid that they will never stop trying. They will keep persevering. 
but they will never get to you if you embrace the truth and recognize the gospel you first heard, the gospel you first believed, and you put your trust, regardless of the circumstances, they are all temporary and subject to change. Glory be to God. Ooh, my time is almost up. Second Peter 2 and 2 to 3. And many will follow their destructive ways because of whom the way of truth will be blasphemed. By covetousness, they will exploit you with deceptive, you see that perverse, speaking perverse things, deceptive words. For a long time, their judgment has not been idle and their destruction does not slumber. But it says here, they will follow their destructive, many will follow their destructive ways. Ruin, loss, destruction, perdition, to perish, to waste. That's what it means, destruction, their destructive ways. Matthew 7, 15, beware of false prophets who come to you by sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. Go and look at the meaning of the word ravenous. To, to, to completely seize and to plunder and to eat and to take, and like, a, like an animal takes a prey, to completely tear it apart. Child of God, this is what false ministers want to do. This is what they are doing in the body of Christ. And we need to be awake to it. We need to understand that they are here to destroy the flock and destroy the flock, the flock rather, mercilessly. To destroy the flock mercilessly. I mean, I've seen videos of these false ministers. Some of them, one I saw, I was weeping when I watched it. Some minister somewhere who had his sheep eating grass. He would say something and they would all run out like animals and start eating grass. I wept the day I watched and I said, Lord, that your truth will prevail always. Because I saw those sheep as people who were being destroyed mercilessly. And there was some so-called man of God standing over them and they were rushing out like animals eating the grass. Or men of God who pretend like they can walk on air and do all kinds of TV drama. You've got people worshiping them. Those are all ravenous wolves. People who want to destroy you, destroy you spiritually, destroy your faith in God and cut off your link from the grace of God, which is abounding already towards you because it's all been paid for in Christ Jesus. We will not be deceived. We will not be distracted and we will not be destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You have so many questions about your life and life in general. Why? When? How? What? Who? And the list goes on. Brother, Jesus is the answer to every question and he loves you just the way you are. He loves you too much to leave you this way. He's knocking on the door of your heart. Will you make a decision for a change today to surrender your life to Jesus Christ the Son of the Living God? If you want to do that, say this prayer out loud, meaning it from the depth of your heart, according to Romans 10, 8 to 13, and you will be saved. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I believe you are the Son of God and that you died for me and rose again just to save me. Come into my heart and make me brand new. As you have promised, I will live for you all the days of my life. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Congratulations on taking the most important decision of your life. You are now born again and a brand new person. It has all happened on the inside of you. We can help you grow in your new faith so that what has just happened on the inside will surely be reflected in your everyday life. Please call us at 0700 Fresh Dew or email us at saved at freshdew.tv and we'll be here for you. Thank you for watching Fresh Dew today with Pastor Nkichi Ene. We trust you were blessed by today's episode. For further information on Fresh Dew, please call us on 0700 Fresh Dew, which is 0700 3737 4339. If you're calling from outside Nigeria, the number will be plus 234 700 3737 4339. Our phones are open from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. GMT plus one. You can also send us an email to info 
at freshdew.tv and we'll be glad to serve you. We also invite you to like, follow, and interact with us on our Twitter and Facebook pages at Fresh Dew TV and also on Pastor Nkechi's Facebook pages at Pastor Ketch. For more information on how you can partner with Fresh Dew and receive Pastor Nkechi's monthly letters and weekly MP3 gifts, please visit our website www.freshdew.tv Once again, thanks for being with us today and we look forward to seeing you next time on Fresh Dew to receive fresh inspiration and direction for your life. Romans 10, 17 says, So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can order today's message and other past messages on our website store, freshdew.tv. It is available on MP3 and CD and also on MP4 and DVD just as seen on TV. Fresh Dew, giving you fresh inspiration and direction for your life. Are you busy or do you have other things challenging your attention while Fresh Dew is airing? No worries, because right now you can catch up with Fresh Dew on the internet. Simply go to freshdew.tv where we have this episode and podcast of previous episodes waiting for you. Don't forget, it's freshdew.tv.